Hello everyone, we are from the Saul group and on this occasion we will present the result of our analysis of the short story entitled The Saul. But before that, I will read the member of this group. This group consists of Muhammad Galang Darmawan, Sofwan Sofian Hadi, it is me, and Fanny Octavia Paramita. This presentation will mainly discuss about the plot, the characters, the narrative perspective, and the settings. First of all, we are going to talk about the plot. The plot is the sequence of events where each affects the next one to the principle of cause and effect. We use Fretax Pyramid to analyze the structure of the story. In Fretax Pyramid, there are seven parts which are consist of exposition, initial incident, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution, and denouement. Let's start with exposition. Exposition is background information of the plot that includes character and settings. In the story, the exposition is at the beginning of paragraph 1, where it is explained the setting of the story, which is in the winter, on the road, and who are the characters involved in the story, which are Rosa, Magda, and Stella. The next one is the initial incident. The initial incident is the very first conflict that occurs in the plot and starts a chain reaction of events. The initial incident in the story is when Stella wishes she could be in Magda's place. From this part, we can tell that she is jealous of Magda and wanted to be wrapped up in the shower, hidden away, asleep, robbed by the march. And after that, the rising action begins. Rising action is the three major events that add suspense or tension to the plot that lead to the climax. The rising action begins when Stella has the weird talk of eating Magda, and besides that, when Rosa gave almost all her food to Magda, Stella gave nothing. The rising action continues until Rosa hides Magda in barrack because she is afraid that Magda will be killed if the guard finds her out. After the series of events, the story reaches its climax. The climax is the most suspenseful part of the, of the plot. The climax in the story is quite unusual because it is suddenly comes without any explanation. Besides that, uh, before reaching the climax, the story uses a forward plot. However, after reaching the climax, the story begins to use a backward plot to explain the, the chronology of Magda's death. The climax is when Stella took the soul away, and she did that because she was cold. The fifth part of uh, the fifth part is the falling action. This is the opposite part of rising action because uh, it is about three events or less that unravel the conflict that leads to the resolution. The falling action begins when Magda goes out to. Uh, the falling action begins when Magda goes out looking for her shower and seeing that, Rosa got panicked and was confused about uh, whether to find the shower first or hide Magda first. But unfortunately, Magda was caught before Rosa could uh, give her the shower. And after that, resolution occurs. It happens when the conflict is resolved and then we discover whether uh, the protagonist achieve their goal or not. In the story, the main goal of Rosa is to keep Magda alive by hiding her from the guard. However, she could not manage that because Magda is thrown against the electric fence. So the resolution in the story is Magda's death. The last one is Dinomen. The Dinomen is the ending it is when Rosa drank Magda's shower until it dried to prevent her from screaming uh, because she could not do anything when she sees Magda die in front of her. The story has a sad ending uh, because Rosa could not reach her goal. That's all about the Fretax Pyramid. Let's move to the Law of Plot. The first part of Law of Plot is the plausible. This story has a valid and possible because it happened in the era of Second World War, the Holocaust incident, where many Jews were massacred. 
So the whole story has a solid foundation by referring to the Holocaust incident in the past. The next part is foreshadowing. The story has a foreshadowing. It is at the beginning of paragraph 6 when Rosa said that she knew Magda was going to die very soon. That part is a foreshadowing which indicates that at the end of the story, Magda will die. The third part is suspense. The, the story is quite thrilling but doesn't have a plot twist because uh, at the climax, the ending of the story is uh, delivered right away. And that makes the reader not surprised by the death of Magda. And the last part is logical. The story is already in uh, chronological order, uh, even though at the climax, the ending was immediately notified. But after that, the author gave an explanation of how Magda died. This is the end of the plot session. Move to the second section. We are going to talk about the characters. As all of we know that characters is any person, animal, or figure that represented in a literary work. There are four characters in the story The Saw. There are Rosa, Magda, Stella, and Nazi Army. The first one is Rosa. She is Magda's mother and she is a Jewish person. It can be seen from the yellow star that shone into Rosa's coat. She has a bleak complexion, dark like a cholera skin, her eyes are blue as air, and she has a smooth feathers of hair, which is almost yellow like the star that shone into her coat. Rosa is a very patient person. She like a walking cradle because she never stopped walking. She also never knows, and she was like that almost every day. Rosa is a very caring mother for her daughter because Rosa keeps trying to keep Magda alive even though she knows that Magda will die. She gave everything to Magda to keep Magda alive. She wrapped Magda in the soul, watched like a tiger to quiet her soul. No one could touch the soul and Magda. Even Stella was not allowed. This indicates that Rosa is a protective tool. Rosa learned from Magda how to drink the taste of a finger in one's mouth. But Rosa is also a fearful woman. She ever dreaming of giving Magda away in one of the village. She could leave the line for a minute and push Magda into the hands of any woman on the side of the road. But she afraid if she moved out of line, she afraid to getting shot. She also afraid that Magda will die. She afraid that Stella will eat Magda. She afraid that someone will steal Magda and do the same as Stella will do. And when Magda died in front of her, she just only stood and took the salt instead because she afraid if she ran, she will get sued. Then the second character is Magda. Magda is Rosa's daughter. She has a very round face and not like Rosa's bleak complexion. Sometimes there was not enough milk and Magda just sucked air then she screamed. She was only 15 months old and because of that she still cannot walk very well. The spineless of her legs could not hold up her fat belly. Magda was quiet inside the saw to hide from Nazi army. But Magda also could love easily like when the corner of the soul blown by the wind. Even Magda had never seen anyone love. Magda is a strong infant. She caught alive for three days without any food and learns not to cry when she is hungry. Magda takes the corner of the soul and sucks it instead to fill their hunger. The soul just like Magda's own baby, her pet, and her little sister. She tangled herself up in it and sucked on one of the corners when she wanted to be very still. Magda was mute, she never cried, until finally she cried because of Stella took her soul away and became the main cause of Magda's death. The next character is Stella. Stella is a teen girl of 14, too small with thin breasts of her own. Her knees were tumors on stick. Her elbows is like a chicken bones. 
Stella was also ravenous and always cold. Sometimes Stella carried Magda, but she was jealous of Magda because Stella wanted to be wrapped too in the soul like Magda, hidden away asleep her rocket by the march. She is a cold-hearted person. She was the main cause of Magda's death because Stella took the soul away, and afterward what she was said just, I was cold. This just indicates that not only her body was cold at that time, but her heart was also cold. The next is Nazi army, described as a black body like a domino, wear a helmet and a pair of black boots. They considered as a bad one, they are very strict, they will shoot everyone who disobey the rules. They can also be said to be inhuman because if we look at the way how Magda stay, how Magda die, Magda just got thrown by them into the electric fence so easily. Like they have no mercy at all and they even don't care about anything. Here we are in narrative perspective, set of features determining the ways in which a pre a text presents persons, events, and setting. In this story, the show, uh, the narrative perspective is a third person omission point of view. Uh, we can see the writer presents the action of all knowing cut like cut like perspective. In this story, we can see the exact information about the different features of the story. You can see here uh, Stella, she, Rosa, and Magda. Then we have setting, time and geographic within a narrative. First we have setting time. Uh, as we know, uh, as explained before, we knew that Rosa is Jewish, uh, shows by uh, this sentence as yellow as the star soon into Rosa's coat. So here I have the visualization. This woman have a yellow star in her coat. It means that she is Jewish. And then we have here every morning, Rosa, Magda, and Stella, and hundreds of others are stood in the arena. Hundreds of others here must be a uh, Jewish too. So here in this story, the the setting time is uh, during Holocaust in World War II. Furthermore, uh, in the beginning of uh, the paragraph, in the beginning of the paragraph, we see here sentence Stella called called the coldness of hell. I thought that uh, this word is uh, introduce uh, the character of Stella, but uh, actually it means uh, star in Latin. And here we have coldness of hell. It means that in the winter. So uh, in the first, uh, in the first paragraph, uh, the story begin in the night of the winter. Then we have setting place. Here we can see on the roads. Uh, if you read this story seriously, you can see uh, these words are repeated in several times uh, on the first paragraph, fourth, and tenth paragraph too. Uh, it means that the story happened mostly uh, on the roads. Then here we have in the shawl and in the barracks under the show, it means that uh, these places uh, are uh, the place where Magda hide every day. And then here we have on the side of the road. I think that these places are not a real place because uh, this is uh, described uh, a dreams of Rosa. She dreamed of giving Magda away in one of the villages. Furthermore, we have these three places. At the barracks opening, in the square outside the barracks, and the roll call arena. Uh, these places uh, 
where Magda flipped onward after Stella took uh, the show. Then we have on the other side of the steel fence, far, far away. Uh, this is uh, Magda's place too, where she she is she was far, far from the mother, for from her mother. And last, we have at the margin of the arena. This is also the Magda's place, where um where Rosa just. Uh, stood and couldn't do anything watched her her child approach the electric fence moreover we have setting mode uh, if you can feel the description uh, from these two atmosphere here you'll know that the writer set mood of a death march it means that if you moved out you'll be killed and if you just uh, stood uh, your child will be killed too this mood and atmospheres is full of darkness and worried and then we have environmental setting first is tragic when Magda was thrown in electric fence then mournful uh, in the end of the story, you can see that Rosa sucks uh, the shawl to keep her from crying. And the last, we have resigned when Rosa couldn't do anything when she sees Magda died. Yep, that's all from us. Hope that this presentation is useful for uh, the viewers and the listener. Thank you and have a nice day everyone.